If you're a foreigner, say for example you have a blonde hair, some school may ask you to make it black. So today we're talking about Japanese schools. There are a lot of questions on Google and YouTube, so I'll try to answer as much as I can. Do you recommend Japanese schools? Actually, I do not recommend Japanese school for all the reasons that I'm going to answer in the next questions. So stick around and you can be the judge if you would recommend your kids to go to Japanese school or not. Do Japanese male students give the last button to a girl? Yes, uh, when you graduate from high school, where you have the, what we call gakuran, it's this one, um, you do give the second button to a girl. Um, I think a girl initiated thing where you, a girl would go to, come to you and ask for the second button. The reason for giving the second button, one theory was that it's close to your heart. That's why you would give the second button. And then each button actually has meaning. It's different in different regions. And in my school, the first button meaning is bring it on. The second button means that I want a girlfriend, I want romance. The third, the third button means I'm on a school lunch duty. The fourth button means I want to have sex. And the fifth button means I had sex before. So if you have one of those buttons open, that means that you either uh, like want to have a girlfriend, or want to have a sex, or uh, you are on a school lunch duty. Is that interesting? What are the Japanese weirdest school rules? School rules, okay. So we call school rules uh, kōsoku. And strange enough, kōsoku can mean rule in school, but also means restrictions. One, they will choose the color of your underwear. And some schools, a guy teacher will look at girls' underwear, and if it's not white, they will ask you to take it off. So it's super weird. You cannot touch your eyebrows. You cannot shave your eyebrows. And skirts has to be below your knees. I will talk about this, like the length of the skirts and in different places. Uh, your hair, like you cannot perm your hair. You cannot do anything to your hair. You cannot have different colors of hair. In winter, you cannot wear sweater or like long uh, stockings. Do you call it stockings? Yeah, you cannot wear stockings to school because they believe that enduring coldness makes you stronger in terms of health. During PE, some schools prohibit you to drink water. So in summer, like you will be running outside and you can't drink, you shouldn't drink water during PE. And then you cannot bike to school. Say for example, my hair color was lighter lighter than like regular people. It's a little brownish. And you have to go to like a hospital to prove that your hair color is originally brown. And you have to give that document to a school to prove that you haven't dyed your hair. And then, if you're a foreigner, say for example you have a blonde hair, some school may ask you to make it black. Even though the rule is do not dye your hair, but basically what they're saying is that don't be different than a Japanese person, which has black hair. Some school prohibit you from having a ponytail because that may arouse a, a boy student. Basically all the school rules says listen to the adult teachers and do not do anything different. What kind of classes do you have other than regular classes? Uh, regu other than like math and science, kokugo, which is Japanese language, we have gijutsu. Gijutsu is industry, arts, and homemaking, basically like handcrafting. And we have cooking class, and then we have music, but I think in Brazil you have music class, right? Yeah. But those are the classes that we have outside of like regular studying. Yeah. Those are not club activities, right? That's no, regular. those are regular classes. You have books, aprons, or you cook um, salad. Japanese female students do makeup and stuff. Okay, so this is yes and no. Mostly, but with exception. Private school and schools with uh, students that has good grades, goals, they may have some exceptions where they can uh, wear makeups. But the strange thing is, in school, you're not allowed to wear makeup at all. But as soon as you graduate high school, if you don't wear makeup, then you're considered not normal, lazy. So that's what uh, a lot of women talk about in Japanese schools, that they do not teach anything to survive in the society. But as soon as you graduate, you're supposed to know how to do makeup and stuff. 
What time do Japanese schools end? Uh, Japanese schools end in like elementary and junior high it ends around like three and four. Uh, high school, five and six. But if you have like club activities after, you go home at like seven or something. Twelve thirty. Yeah, okay. yeah. In Brazil, you guys leave at twelve thirty. That's yeah, too, too, that's too early. It's like we envy. Yeah, but after school, we have cram schools to go to. So that ends at like ten or eleven. Yeah. So. What time does the school start? School starts at eight thirty ish. So you have to really wake up early if you live far away. I was always late at school. Are uh, Japanese teachers paid well? Uh, that's yes and no. I have information here. Five years or less of experience, you get about two thousand dollars. Under ten years, you get about two thousand eight hundred dollars a month. And around like thirty years of experience, you get around four thousand dollars. But the thing is, like, they are not paid overtime. They all have overtime. They have to stay in school for a longer time. They look after each clubs. Like, if you are assigned to like clubs, then you, they have, you have to stay until seven. And then they have practices and competition to attend to on the weekends. So you have to work on the weekends, but those are not paid. Well, I think some pays, uh, but mostly not paid at all. So I could be a teacher tomorrow, and then I have to teach students how to play ping pong. And I have no idea how to do that. And I would also not be paid for that. My friends had 100 hours overtime in a month, and he was not paid. Teachers are working under a very cruel condition and they are not compensated enough. Are Japanese schools free? Japanese school is free, but exceptions. Tuition for public primary and secondary school is free, even for the foreign students. However, uh, you will be required to cover some costs for lunches, school materials, uniforms, and contribution to the PTA, Parent Teacher Association. They will give you a sheet of paper with everything you need to start the school. Yeah, that's how it is. So, but the tuition is free unless you go to a private ones. Are uh, Japanese schools good? Yes and no. Um, if you're thinking of your kids' personal growth, I don't think there isn't much to support individual uh, students. That is good, particularly good. They don't like support the the best ones differently, but they treat everyone the same. Thinking about others. Um, being a team players and stuff, I think to for that Japanese schools are good. Are Japanese schools year round? <laughs> uh, no, we have summer and winter and spring vacation. Summer forty days, winter ten days, spring from like March twenty fifth. Are Japanese schools strict? Yes and no. It depends on where you go. Public schools are very strict. Um, you would have all those rules like your hair, your underwear, your, your nail, your makeup, your eyebrows and everything. And you will be punished for being different than like, different looking than everyone else. Uh, all those rules are there so that the kids listen to the teachers, the adults. And if you ask like why there is such a rule and they will just respond to you that you know there is a rule in society and this is one of them. Do Japanese kids walk to school? Yes, Japanese students do walk to school. I had to walk 30 to 40 minutes a day. Like even me in elementary school, I would walk along um, 30 to 40 minutes to school and then come back home the same. In my school, if you're a first grader, you will be paired with the sixth grader to walk to school. And then you will go home in a group or something sometimes. Um, but there will be parents, there will be parents on the streets to watch them over. But you see, you do see kids alone, like walking by themselves around. Like yeah. My boy. <laughs> it is. Um, yeah, you do see kids going home alone. So it's kind of strange, I guess. Um, but yeah, um, and if you are really far from the school, you can use a bicycle, but there's a limit in the bicycle parking lot, so not everyone can use a bicycle. And then they will create a district in a map, and if you are outside of that map, you can't use a bicycle. So my friend, one of my friends, is right on the line, but inside of that circle, so he cannot, he could not use a bicycle. Oh, no. Yeah, I, I, it was really 
sad to see him walking when he could have biked if he was living right next door. <laughs> but yeah. Do you get to choose the school you go to? Um, junior up until junior high school, I think you choose by district. Unless you go to like a private school to go to like better high school and stuff, um, you usually go to the one close to your house district. Are students separated by grade? Um, the classes are made uh, with the students' grades, but not in the way that you think. Um, they will basically make a, the average um, classes. So each class has from the top to the bottom to make the environment for everyone equal. So each class has like the best students and the worst students. This is a method that is used in many school it seems. It's not always the case. Do Japanese girls wear a skirt as short as anime? This is yes and no. And most rural places, no, definitely. You would have your skirt below the knee. Maybe in Tokyo or cities, you would see the skirt above the knee. Um, I found an article um, that has like each prefectures with how high the skirt length is but my city my prefecture um most students have below the knee um s skirt height uh, but private school i think it's you would have more flexibility to how high the skirt can be even though the skirt is long i think they would roll up the skirt and to make it short the guy teachers will catch that and they will ask girls to lift up their shirt to see if the skirt is rolled up or not. Is there ants on my neck? We see in anime there is someone with a ruler measuring whether the skirt is like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that may be exaggerated, but I would say that there are teachers like that. Like, they would have measured... I think maybe in my school there was that. Since I'm not a girl, I don't recall well, but I don't think that's an exaggeration. Do Japanese kids clean and cook at school? Uh, we do not cook but we do clean the classes. It, the food is cooked. If you are on a lunch duty you will go to the kitchen and then you, you are supposed to bring the cooked food to the classes and distribute it to everyone. So we do not clean but we do have a lunch duty. If you are punished you would have to clean the gym and stuff so I'd say I cleaned a lot in school. <laughs> <laughs> I was late to school a lot, so... <laughs> What's senpai and kohai and why is it important? So senpai and kohai, senpai means an upperclassman, someone older than you, and kohai is underclassman, someone who is younger than you. If you are not in the club, like soccer or any kind of sports club, after, uh, after classes, um, you would not see that a lot, often. But if you are in a club, um, the senpai kohai thing is very, very important. Basically, whatever senpai says, you're supposed to listen. And if you're kohai, you're supposed to do whatever the senpai says. And what you see in anime, say for example, senpai would ask you to go to the cafeteria to get the bread for you. That is actually true. That actually happens. So, <laughs> yeah, so that is to create this like social fabric of seniorities. Um, this, this senpai kohai thing will um, create this seniority that you see in every company. You're supposed to use respectful ways of speaking. That, and that is maybe the reason why when you meet someone new, you're supposed, you, you ask like, hey, how old are you? And then if, you're, if they're older than you, you are using respectful way. And if they're younger than you, you're just using a casual way of speaking. And they're supposed to respect you because you're older. Are Japanese schools similar to anime? No, not at all. <laughs> um, some aspects, yes, of course. But they are not similar to anime at all. Say, for example, if you look at anime, they have all the different colors of hairs, like rainbows, like <laughs> um, blonde, black brown, green, blue, and obviously you only have like black hairs and like you know you're supposed, you're not supposed to dye your hair. I think anime 
skirts like maybe like way too short and you would see uh, students with uh, their short shirts outside of the pants uh, that is not allowed in school at all like your shirt has to be tucked in the pants and if your short is outside of your pants they will scold you for um, having your shirt outside of pants so those like school uniform has to be worn pro properly one of the guy in my school had his school symbol upside down and the unif on the uniform. Teachers slapped him and he broke his eardrums and he was sent to hospital. Yeah, Japanese teachers do um, beat you up if you do something and I don't think that's right at all. And that is one of the reasons why I did not recommend Japanese school. Are Japanese students allowed to work? Uh, it depends on the school, but mostly Japanese schools do not allow uh, students to work even though it, there is some exceptions if your family is in a financially difficult situation they may allow you to work um, part-time but even if um, your family is in a tough economic situation there are times that s schools just do not let you work uh, part-time at all of course Japanese students do work part-time um, behind teachers um, <laughs> and one time my friend was working at a burger restaurant and one of the like most strict PE teacher comes in and asks for a strawberry shake he kind of smiled at him and then he the teacher looked at him in the eyes and said like what's funny and he didn't even recognize him uh, but he was almost caught um, but students do work, um, some students do work, but Japanese schools do not allow them to work. Did you work? Yeah, one month, <laughs> but that was it. I, I just can't do part-time jobs at all. Um, yeah, um, I work at Moss Burger for one month. Um, I spend seven hours or something a day working and then I would buy a Moss Burger for lunch. So we spent like $12 and I was paid $6 an hour. So I basically spent two hours for working there. So uh, that was my working experience. Are Japanese students required to learn English? Yes, we are required to learn English. Um, we study English, I think about eight to 10 years. But those English that we study is for the exams. So that is the reason why no one, almost no one speak English in Japan because we are not teach to speak or communicate, but we are told to write answers on the paper in English. We do study English in Japan, but we do not study English in Japan. Uh, yeah, it's the same for Brazil. It's the same for Brazil? Years? How many years? Yeah, how many years do you study English in Brazil? I think as soon as we start school, school in Brazil, you would basically say it starts when you're three mm -hmm. years old and you finish when you're around 18 years old. Oh, okay, okay. So like even from the very beginning we're taught English. Yeah. So we we don't speak English. <laughs> we're kind of exceptions. I mean, we did study English outside of school, right? Like it's not something that school taught us. No. <laughs> no, not, not at, all. at all. Yeah. If you have any questions, comment down below and we're going to answer it maybe in the next video. Okay, I didn't know some of the stuff that was actually behind the camera and I was surprised. <laughs> but if you like this video, please hit like, subscribe and stay tuned for more.